This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Ting. We've been talking a whole lot lately about media centers like the MK802 and the hacks that we could do with that. So this week I wanted to check out a different one. This one is from Netgear and it's called the Neo TV Streaming Player. Specifically, this one is the NTV300 and it's like 50 bucks. So it's super cheap. It's cheaper than anything else that you can get on the market pretty much. So it has a MediaTek arm inside of it, a 128 meg flash chip and 256 megs of RAM. And it also comes with this nice handy dandy little piece of paper that says GNU General Public License, meaning, hey, it's open source, so we know it runs Linux. And you can see on here, it runs Netflix. Isn't that kind of cool? So first off, we want to get into this thing as root, and we don't even want to have to open up this little box right here. Isn't that cute? That's a little Netgear NTV. Yeah, it's adorable, isn't it? So. To get onto root, we follow the guide on this guy's website. So Craig figured out this whole really cool jailbreak of the Neo TV over at uh, slash dev slash TTYS0, which is an awesome name for a website. So all you have to do is go into the settings to connect manually. And for example, I can do something like this. Go into your settings, go to network and connect manually. When you type in your SSID, so you want to put in a back tick uh, and then type in something like reboot. And hopefully this works. Ha! It's rebooting the box. How cool is that? So the reason why this works is because adding in those little back ticks makes it an injection attack. It works because the developers of this little box, they didn't sanitize the user input, which basically means take out all those little back ticks. And you can use that SSID line to run all sorts of cool commands. So you can tell it to go into manufacturer test mode and you can enable Telnet and then you can have root on the box. How cool is that? And it's super easy. You don't even have to take a screwdriver to the thing. So. The maximum length of this SSID is 32 characters. So you can't put all of your commands into there at once. But what you can do is create a shell script in slash temp slash a that has the commands and you can run it. Now to do this, first off, you got to change your directory to this, for example, a temporary folder. So to do that, you go over here, back down to the settings. And this might take a little while. So you'll type in backtick echo change directory slash mount slash ubi underscore boot little greater than symbol slash temp slash a and another backtick and hopefully it'll work for you. Hit done and done is connecting. All right. Now while that's working, the next thing you're going to do is make a new directory under the slash temp folder. So to make that directory, you type in backtick echo space Mark, make directory mkdir and then mfg underscore test to greater than symbols slash temp slash a and execute that. It'll take about 30 seconds or so for it to actually complete and then you type in one more command. Go back into it. So basically all you did this time was change the directory over to that one that you just created and next we're going to echo enable to create a new file called enable. All right, and now to create that enable file, so you go over here again. Always forget those, always remember those back ticks. Don't forget them. So this one just creates that new file called enable, and then next we're going to run the file. So when you run this command, it's going to tell sh, which is kind of like bash, but it's not so don't email me about that, to basically run this file called A. And then it's going to restart. Hit done, done, and wait for it to connect and fail. Okay guys, now this is the really hard part. So I'm going to take this off of its little sticky pad and see this little power cable? You have to unplug it and restart it. It's really hard. Oh my God. And then you restart. 
my god. And you wait for it to restart. Now, get yourself an Ethernet cord and plug it into your laptop and then plug it into the device. So now it has restarted, yay! But we had all those failed error messages whenever we were trying to connect, so I don't know if any of those commands that I put in were actually correct. So one really easy way to figure this out is by plugging in a nice little ethernet cord into the Netgear Neo TV and then plug in your laptop and go into your wired settings, internet protocol version four, use the following IP address, and you wanna change this to 192.168.0.101. And this one should end up being 192.168.0.100. So they'll be neighbors, yay, wonderful. And once you do that, click okay. And I'm gonna go into putty. And I'm gonna try to telnet into it, 192.168. Dot zero dot 100, tell net, press open. Yes, login, and the login is root. Ah, perfect, so we can do pwd slash root, and I can also do something like top. Shows me all my running things, that's awesome, so it totally works. I just got into this by telnetting, and I have root access, and you can now hack to your Linux content. And you can do all sorts of nifty things with it. It's Linux, so you have all the fun you want. Do you guys have questions? Do you have comments? Or have you actually gotten one of these nifty little devices and played with it yourself? You can email me over at feedback at hack5.org, or you can comment below. Next up, we got viewer questions from you guys. Stay tuned. You guys have probably heard me raving about Ting recently, and for good reason. I absolutely love their customer-first approach to the whole cell market. If you're not familiar, those are the guys up in Canada, those awesome geeks, geeks from TO. Uh, have you ever met a Canadian that's not like the nicest geek ever? And so get this, they've got the craziest idea for the cell market. It's like totally shaking things up. It's brilliant. It's megabytes, minutes, text messages, each of them build separately. It's just kind of like a no brainer because uh, they cut the BS. There's no ridiculous fees. You don't have to think about anything. You just, you know, if you use too much, you're not penalized. They just bump you up to the next plan. If you use too little, no worries. They're going to credit you the difference. Those guys are awesome. They've been, uh, they've been hitting the road. Like I just went up to a, uh, a Ting meetup, got to meet some of the like, like what other, you know, um, cell phone companies have like like user groups and stuff. And so I went up to a Ting meetup, got to meet those awesome Canadian guys, give out some free phones and stuff. Those guys are serious about shaking up the cell phone market. I love it. You guys should head over to hak5.ting.com. It would automatically uh, initiate the coupon code, which is gonna get you $75 off your first month of service for just being a fan of Hack5. So go check it out. It's time once again to check port 110. Oleg writes, in the last show, you were talking about your need for a progress bar in DD. The solution is called PV, Pipe Viewer. All you need to do is know the size of the data being transferred to get an ETA. Here's an example of a four gig payload. You can do DD if equals slash home slash blah blah input bin and then pipe PV wait tack s 4000 is that milliseconds i believe m for megabytes so 4000 m would be megabytes. Like four gigs great ish and then you pipe dd of equals slash dev slash ddb sdb well if that's <laughs> what it is and so i'm actually gonna here i'll show you an example because you know okay. that's always fun let's let's just let's speak linux commands out loud yes okay. um, <laughs> so if i do a dd and then my input file in this case equals, oh, you know, I should probably find out what it is. Um, EF tack H, and we'll see that I've got a USB drive plugged in here. Yes, and it is, uh, it's, it's a 7.6 gig, it's an eight gig. So if I do DD and then IF equals slash dev slash SDB, and then I pipe that. So already I'm just taking, uh, all of the information from slash dev slash sdb mm -hmm. and putting it into pipe viewer, tac tac wait, okay, and then tac s. And this is where it's going to change. He says you have to have an estimate. So if so I was. So you're taking the output and putting it into pipe viewer. Yeah, so it's kind of cute because yes. pipe viewer is acting as a man in the middle between the standard input and standard output in DD. So I'm like running DD That's twice, awesome. which is really <laughs> cool. 
Um, I never thought about using it that way, and I love the idea that it's just kind of like a bit man in the middle. So you could use this for throughput. You could use this for just about anything. Oh, yeah, I guess you could. If you knew what... And then this is the thing that's the gotcha, the TAC-S. The size. The size. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I know it's 7.6, so I'll say 7600M. Yeah, sure, that's close enough. And then what do I do? I pipe that back to DD, and then the OF, the output file in this case, I'll just say slash home slash ardwell slash file dot image. And I don't have permission to do that, so I'll sudo bang bang. And there we go. Bang, bang, bang. And it's totally got the thing I was saying where it's like I wanted the, the you know, little equal sign with the greater than that goes across the screen and tells me the oh, ETA. That is and it's awesome. like, yeah, this is going to take an hour. Oh, wow. <sighs> Man. Yeah, it takes a while. Yeah, DD well, is really well, slow. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's DD's fault or the fact that this is a, it could be the slow bus or it could be many things actually before somebody emails True, in. It could be the USB. Uh, BS. BS. You, you can specify in DD the BS or the block size. Oh. And so without doing that, I'm telling it, like, I think it's doing it like, I have no idea what its default bit si uh, block size is, but if so you it's give it a bigger. So smaller slower? Yeah, smaller slower. Okay. Yeah. That That's makes the sense. idea. And he also said, um, Oleg said, I am a Unis Unix sysadmin, and he uses it all the time to get approximate times for a process because there is nothing worse than telling somebody you don't know how long it will take. I can definitely quote that, especially in the shop. <laughs> Just do what Scotty does. Just be like, oh, yeah, that's uh, Captain to Warp Drive. That's going to yeah, take at least eight drive. hours. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he says it's good for any stream operation, MySQL import, packing, unpacking, and even searching and using grep. Nice. How wonderful. Thank you for sending that in. That's so yeah, awesome. That if you've really got some useful. tips to uh, send our way, just remember that you can send your feedback to feedback at hack5.org. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's also where you can send your Technolust photo of the week. Speaking of which, we have one this week. It's from Jason. He writes in, thought you guys might like this. It's an orphan duckling that I've taken in next to some beautiful Wi-Fi goodies. I've oh. named it after the gorgeous Shannon, a.k.a. Snubs. Oh, oh. look, his little duckling Snubs. That duck is so cute. So. I used to have ducks. Yeah? Yeah. We had hmm. three in my household. You well, know, they were outside. Ooh, but. There's fun new stuff happening with the other duck. You know ooh. this? Yeah, we've got a really? new batch in the works. So yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. It's, What's it's, it do? It's not, well, it's, I mean, it's the duck, right? But we've right. been able to like do another larger rev. And as anybody knows that's been following the USB rubber ooh. ducky project, it was one of those like yes. lessons in custom manufacturing hardware. And so as we oh, do yeah. larger batches, hmm, not saying, I'm just saying. Oh, we're gonna have okay. uh, some fun. We're gonna have a lot less expensive duck so here for the holidays. So we're gonna hear more about that. Which will be great. Ooh, that's yeah, expensive. actually, by the time this airs, that'll have done nice. been done. So that's hey, super check exciting. out HAK Shop for that. That's uh, where you can support us directly. Yes. Sorry, it just kind of made sense. To that's excellent. Throw that in right there. Uh, let's get into some trivia, though. All right. So this last week's trivia question was. Who is widely recognized as the most influential female game designer in history for her work on Sierra Online's series of adventure games? And the answer was Roberta Williams. Roberta! You know, I have to say, Roberta if you're into Williams. adventure games, go and check out uh, Jason Scott's documentary, Get Lamp. Ooh, I just finished yes. watching it and the bonus info and all that stuff, uh, textfiles.org. That's so cool. Yeah, you, you got to, a copy, right? Oh, yeah, I got nice. the copy. It's really good. Um, and then it totally got me on a kick playing some text files and doing some BBS stuff and telnetting and, you know, okay. hooray. We'll get nice. into some of that later because it's... We could totally yeah. do a trivia question from Get Lamp. We could. Hmm, we possibly. could auction off Jason Scott himself for that. We could, yes. You well, too can win a date with Jason, with Jason Scott. Make sure that's or Shannon, cool. whichever. Make sure huh? that's cool with him Not before sure we auction him off. To some random person on the yes, internet. Yes, we will auction off yeah. a date with Shannon and Jason Scott. You get to choose. At the same time? At the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Again, so like, that like the trifecta you were talking about earlier. No problem. Yeah, Done. the trifecta. There you go. Okay, so do you want to know what this week's trivia question is? <laughs> yes, what is it? <laughs> all right, so this week's question is, who is known as the mother of the internet? See, I'm all about these females right now. Mm -hmm. Who is known as the mother of the internet and also for her invention of the spanning tree protocol? You can answer that over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some swag. You know how I love a protocol. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, anyway, I could spend, I could spend like my nights reading RFCs, but uh, that's just what I do. What do you spend your nights reading? Feedback at hack5.org. Let us know. And you can also go over to hack5.org slash follow to find out what we are doing every day. Well, maybe not every day, but at least what's going on at the conventions and whatnot. Most every day. Yeah. And you can yeah. also, like I said, if you want to support us directly, duckies, pineapples, um, cucumbers. Yes. Uh, and the holidays lava. are coming up. Keep that yeah. in mind. So there we go. 
Uh, with all that said, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Bye. We need a Photoshop competition on that. Please, make it happen.